do, which should be that one. You okay with that? Yep. Hello? It's good. Okay, I'd like to introduce Steve Lindsay from ICSD. Earlier, Dimitri was talking about optimizing regional pricing, which is a nice segue into exactly what you guys are doing. That's exactly true. Hello, my name's Steve. Uh, that's, that was me up on the screen. And I've come from London. And I work for a company called Ixty, I-X-T-Y. Uh, there's six of us in the company. And we started as a brand new company about two years ago. And early on, we had a few ideas of what we were going to do. And we're not doing exactly the same thing as our early ideas. Very early on, we went to see a large developer in London who is actually now our development partner, who was our development partner, because we moved on from that. And they asked us this question. They said, we've got a problem. If you can help us, we'll be your client. We need to find what the right prices are and then set those prices for in-app purchases, not just for one country, but right around the world. And then we think we'll make a lot more money. Can you do that? And the reason they're asking, and this is a slide which is very similar to Vladimir, who opened the talk today showing revenues. It's true, the in-app purchase, this is in-app purchases, um, which are booming. They're almost doubling every year. And this is as big as Hollywood now. So this is the reason we're all here. It's a nice big industry and we all want to be involved. And that's why we're getting asked the questions. But the flip side is, yes, there's more money in the business, but that brings more players in the business. So there's more companies, there's more games, and people are having to spend more and more to get users to play their games. So what we were asked by that same developer was these costs are rising. What, is there an easy way for us to convert users into paying users? Make us some money, because we need the money. We, we, as you saw in the first talk, these guys need to pay the wages, pay the rent, and they want money to build their next game, which is what they actually enjoy doing. Now, the backdrop to all of this is smartphone growth, which has been spoken about a lot. Um, now, where is the growth? Well, it's everywhere, but where is it most? As you can see from the yellow and green bits up there, it's, it's not in, uh, in Western Europe. It's in Central Europe, it's in Africa, it's in the Middle East. It's in South America, it's in Asia. So all those emerging markets, that's where the phones are being bought, tablets too. That's where you'd expect the people to be playing the games. That's where in-app purchases are gonna be happening. But oh dear, now don't look at every number, but if you look at this one, there's just as many game users in South America as there are in North America, but the revenues this is about a tenth of that. Same number of users, 10 times more money spent in North America than South America. So there's a problem. And what is the problem? The problem is that the users of games in these countries, not just South America, Asia, Africa, they are being offered things for sale in the game, in app purchases, at prices that they cannot afford and don't want to buy at the prices. This is a simple illustration. You're on the train home in New York or in Berlin. You're playing a game. You see something for sale. It's a sword to kill the dragon. You've got an hour to kill on the train. You're fed up with reading the newspaper. Seven and a half dollars. Oh, yeah, I think I'll buy that sword. Why not? Six euros fifty. That's the same thing, just translated with the currency converted. Go on, I'll have that. In India, that's 500 rupees. Do I want to buy the sword? Or do I want to buy eight chickens and feed my family for the next week? I think that's the problem. So now we, need, now we know that we need to make these things affordable. So how do we do it? We've got to work out what is affordable, and that's not as easy as you think. You've got to get some data on what prices should be in any country. Where do you get it from? And when you've got it, how do you interpret it? I like the little cartoon here. After analyzing all your data, I think we can safely say that none of it is useful. And here's an example of something that can surprise. Here's a loaf of bread from England. Don't buy that bread, it's absolutely horrible, but that's I don't recommend that one. 
there's the same loaf in Australia, same similar loaf. You'd expect, looking at purchasing price parity, doing a currency conversion, you'd expect those to be exactly the same price. They're not. The Australian loaf is half the price of the English loaf. I mean, I don't know why it is. It could be to do with energy costs being lower in Australia, grain prices being low. Whatever it is, it wasn't what we thought, which means if you go and get purchasing price parity data, if we can't get it right for a loaf of bread, we might not be getting it right for an in-app purchase. So you need lots of different medium, lots of different data. It's not as simple as that. Now, as was mentioned earlier, Dmitry Martinov recent, uh, earlier said, you, ha you have to change the prices in different countries. And this is another lady who works for Google. If, I, if, I, if I'd known about Dmitry, I'd have had his picture up here instead. And uh, we saw her speak six months ago, and she said, oh, she Cross did say. So. Uh, we recommend this as a way to find the optimal price to help you increase conversion and gain incremental revenue. Short and sweet. She says, if, if you can find a way to test prices across your markets, this is the way to find the optimal price to help increase conversion and gain incremental revenue. So Google, she spoke for an hour on this, have recognized the problem. So the solution, that's what we're trying to work on in our company. The solution is price optimization. What you have to do is you have to A, B test different in-app purchase prices to different user groups within the same country at the same time. That's the crucial bit. You then analyze the results you get. You see which group was the winner, which one made the most money. You change your prices, and then you do the same thing again. You do another A-B test. You continue doing this. You continue tweaking prices to adjust for changing market conditions, whatever they are. Does it sound easy? Because a lot of the developers say, yeah, you know what, I'll go and try that myself. I spoke to a company in Brighton, a nice place in England, and he said, I've tried this myself. We've got 10, about 10 in-app purchases in our games. We've got five games, and there's 64 countries that Google Play allow you to change the prices on. And just to let you know, at the moment, we're only doing what we do for Google Play. We're not doing Apple yet. And part of the reason for that, as you heard earlier, is that 78% of mobile devices now use Android, so it's the place to start. 3,200 prices to set, that guy had to do. And then he said, it was difficult, it was tiring, it was hard work, and then he said, I don't even know if the prices I picked were right, as I explained with the data earlier, it's not obvious. And he said, and the idea of then, on top of having installed 3,200 prices, of doing A-B testing on those again and again, he said, forget it. We don't, I don't have time. I've got better things to do. There's the problem. But is it worth doing? Yes, it is. This is uh, our development partner. This was actually an early stage of what we do now, so we're actually better at what we do than when he did this. They used the prices we gave them, and they made over 20% more globally, and this is a good-sized game, they made 20% more globally in revenue on in-app purchases. I mean, some countries were crazy, um, as you can see. Um, Russia, 65, Mexico, 107, there's some big ones. Some of them were exaggerated by the fact they didn't have many users, but overall, 20% more. And in, in the um, emerging markets, much higher than that. So we know it's difficult to do, collecting the data. We know it's time-consuming doing the A-B testing. So you could do it yourself, but people have tried and they find it hard, and that's why we've spent two years already trying to do it. Get someone else to do it. And this was a guy who has, who's installing with us right at this moment, and he said, I said, out of interest, why are you doing that with us? He said, I run a team, and there's 30 of them, he said, and we're lean and we're mean and we like to turn things off and turn things on. And he said, when I get something like this, I pay somebody to do it. And that's why you're doing it for me. So just to run through how we do it. This is where we start. We don't just use one set of data. We use all sorts of data. Plus, we use what we've learned from previous clients in terms of type of game, prices. It's never an exact science, but it gives us a good starting point. 
we come up with a sensible price for an in-app purchase in each country. Next thing we do is something we call smart pricing. We change the prices so that they don't look silly or don't put people off. In Britain and in America, people like prices like £9.99, £1.29. You do not want something coming up as £1.22. You might actually make more money if you put the price up to £1.39. It just seems to work that way. In Switzerland, they like fives, so I'm told. China and Korea and Japan, they really don't like fours. It sounds like the word to die. And uh, I've lived in Singapore and Hong Kong, and they, you do get lots of flats without a fourth floor. And there's an example there, look. So we've got the sensible prices. We then, as I said earlier, we A-B test for a better one. We do it again. When we've got the results, we have a look. We do, then we do it again and again and again and again. And then we get what we think is an optimal price. But actually, as Olga said earlier, when she was speaking, you, there's no such thing as an optimal price. There's not, no such thing as an optimal game. It keeps changing forever. This is a little bit... Um, you don't expect to understand it, but this is w if people integrate our, our software, our, our SDK, they get to choose which countries they want to turn on and off. They click on the country, I want to optimise Australia, I don't want to optimise India. You don't have to take the world, you just do the bits you want. But there are still people who say to me, do you know what, I don't really care about making more money in India or Brazil or or Indonesia, I, I don't really have much revenue from there, so I'm not really interested. Well, I think we've explained why they haven't got much revenue from there. And here's a couple of nice things that people have said about us recently. There's one, we made over 20% more in-app revenue. And there's one from about three weeks ago. I rang up a guy in China, he said, I'm really glad you've got in touch with me. I was wondering why people aren't doing what you do and he's signing up with us too soon. So, thanks for staying around and missing your lunch, or the early lunch. And uh, this, this is what I'll leave you with. You get more people spending more money in your game by efficiently localizing in-app price, prices worldwide. And I'm around today and tomorrow. I've actually got a little demo I can show you of actually how our system works if you're interested. Come and grab me. Thank you. Any questions, let me know. <coughs> Thanks, Steve. That was good. By the way, you happen miss lunch. Lunch is still there, I hope. <laughs> if it's not there, I'm going to be really annoyed, too. <laughs> um. so if you don't have a question you want to put it in front of everyone, Steve's going to be here. So that might be a good way to do it. Well, thank you for listening. Okay. See you later. Thank you.